So this is my old Harbor Freight uh, heat gun, which I've used many, many times. I've had it for about six years now, and I've used it many, many times to uh, heat up bolts on an automobile that were just frozen on there, wouldn't come off. Uh, it seems that if you put heat to them, you can do it with a torch, a propane torch, or you can do it with a heat gun. Anyway, uh, I used it this last weekend, and uh, when I went to turn it on now, it wouldn't work. So this is kind of a disclaimer. Anytime you're working on a device, it takes 120 volts AC, which is what this takes. Uh, you don't want to work on it or start disassembling it with it plugged in. If you you can do continuity tests, will help you pinpoint where the problem is. You're going to see me later on in this video uh, do a jumper wire and plug this thing in. But I, my disclaimer is that you should not do these types of things unless you are really, really familiar with working with uh, 120 volts AC because it's very, very dangerous. You could get a severe shock. You could even electrocute yourself. So with that, I'm going to... Uh, so go ahead and start my video and, and my disclaimer is you shouldn't do this unless you uh, have the confidence and the knowledge to do it. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this bolt out here and then I'm going to turn this counterclockwise and it pulls off. And then there's uh, six screws. One, two, three, four, five, six screws that you take out. And then this handle will come apart. You can see a seam there. You might have to stick a little screwdriver in there and kind of pry it apart. But once you uh, get the screws out, uh, you should be able to get it apart. I'm going to put it on pause. Okay, so there's a little screw that I just took out of this part here, which I'm going to now rotate counterclockwise. And then it comes off. And you can see why it's got to be rotated counterclockwise when you look inside of here. And there's a little post right here that, uh, that that slips onto and then you rotate it to lock it into place and then you put the screw in. So I'm going to take the other six screws out. So there's the first little screw I took out and there's the other six that I just took out of here. And then, like I say, you just open pry this open here and uh, that comes off and now you can see uh, the wiring and the devices so if I get this just pulls out of there uh, got two little locking tabs right down in there but it just fits down inside of there just like that so now we've pretty much got it apart and uh, you can see that there's a, a black wire coming in here. That would be your hot wire, which would line up with this. Uh, you could do a continuity test from, from this part of your plug. The, you can see this one here is wider and this one here is narrower. So if you did a continuity test from there to here, to this screw right here where that black wire comes, you should have continuity. The other one is the common, the wide one. So you've got a wire that runs from there over to here is this white wire coming in. And you could test for continuity there. From, from that part of that plug over to this white and you should have continuity. If you don't, then there's something, maybe this mine looks good, but maybe this part is broken Maybe you've got a bad break in somewhere in your power cord. Uh, but that would be the first thing to check, I guess, to make sure that you got continuity to, from the plug to the inside of the handle here. I'm going to put it on pause. Okay, so you could, once you know that you have continuity from the plug over to here, then you could continue doing continuity tests with this trigger. Right now, the trigger is in the off position, but you could uh, turn it one way or the other and then test for continuity 
from here to the center. You can see this brown wire comes over here and it goes to the center. So you can test for continuity here to here. And once you see you got continuity, then you can uh, flip the switch the other way and test for continuity going the other way. So that would be a continuity test on the switch. Or you could disconnect those wires. You see that they just slip over a post. Take the trigger completely off, flip it one way, and test for continuity, like I just said, across this post. Then flip it the other way and test for continuity across this way. If you don't have continuity with this switch flipped one way or the other, then you know that your switch is bad and you need to replace your switch. And I'll put it on pause. So let's say that we do have continuity from our uh, plug-in in here to the handle. We've tested our, our, uh, our switches and we do have continuity there and everything is good. So now you want to do is you take these two screws out here and uh, that will allow you to lift this whole thing out. The, the, the uh, heating element is inside of here and this is the blower motor. And on the back of the motor, we've got a circuit board with some diodes. And those diodes turn AC to DC. I'm going to put it on pause and take those two screws out right there. Okay, so I have two more screws taken out. I still have those six and the one over here. And those two screws came out of here. So now this part of it will lift up. And uh, the other thing I want to do is I want to go ahead and there's a screw right here and a screw right there. If I take those two screws undone, I will be able to take this white wire out and I would be able to take that brown wire out. And then I can have this whole piece away from the gun. I'm gonna Okay, so I got those two screws out, I pulled the white wire out, I pulled the brown wire out. So now this whole thing, I can pick the whole thing up and remove it from the plastic case. The next thing you're going to want to do is mine just has uh, these locking tabs here. So I can take those locking tabs with a small screwdriver. Uh, pry those loose and then take this part, this black part, off. Well, I'm going to do that next. I'm going to put it on pause. Okay, so I took, uh, I took this piece off. Like I say, it just has a couple of tabs there that you have to free it up from those tabs and then you pull it off. And there's the uh, impeller for the motor. And next, I'm going to take these two. You can see the blue. It ends up going to the positive. There's a positive sign there of this board. And then the black one goes to the other side. So I'm going to pry those off or pull them off. And then the motor will be free. Okay, so I just pried the blue one off and the black one off. And here's the motor free from the device. Now over here on this, if we look down inside of there, what you're going to see is the heating element. You're going to see a thermal fuse. I've already actually repaired this, and I'm taking this video after the fact. So that thermal fuse was bad. And when I had to cut the lead down in there and then put a new one on. Uh, this wire ended up being a little bit too short to make it over to where I unplugged it from, from this side over here. So I had to uh, splice some more wire in there and that's why this white tape is on here. Um, but, and the old heating, the old uh, thermal fuse that I took out of there was completely covered with black uh, heat shrink. And I wasn't even sure what was underneath there at the point, at, the, at that point. At this point, when I looked down inside of there, I saw the white wire coming in, and then I, could, I saw 
heat shrink on this side of that thermal fuse going all over the thermal fuse and all the way down to where the thermal where the lead off of that thermal fuse is riveted to the heating element. So I had ended up having to cut to cut with a pair of uh, side cutters right here as close as I could to that thermal fuse so I would have enough of the lead left on there that I could crimp on a new piece. In my understanding, you can't solder these thermal fuses on. You have to crimp them on. With, and the reason you can't solder them is because the heat will travel up that lead and burn out the thermal fuse. So you have to crimp them on. I'm going to put it on pause now and take those three screws. You look down inside of there and you see those three screws? The one on this side, one, two, three. I'm going to put it on pause. Okay, so I got one of those screws out and the other two are loose. And uh, here is the thermal fuse I'm, that I replaced. And you can see the lead coming over here and being crimped. And then you can see that that crimp has got a crimp on this side of the lead and then it's crimped on the other side, which is the old, that's the lead from the old thermal fuse that I crimped that other side of the crimp onto. And that goes on down and hooks up to the fire, is riveted to the fiberglass of the heating element. You can see the red and the blue wires coming out from the heating element they come through the side here and through some uh, uh, thermal protection and there's the white wire. So if I take this off now, see it just lifts off because I've got the three screws and there's where this piece would come, come through that opening that is in the side there. And that will give you much better access to cutting that thermal, the old thermal fuse if it's bad. And the way to find out whether it's bad or not is you hook up your meter on continuity and you test from this end of the white wire down to the other end of the thermal fuse. And if you don't have continuity, that means your fuse has been blown. And that was exactly my problem. I had a blown thermal fuse, which I had to cut the old one off, crimp on a new one, and I thought that was going to fix my whole problem, but it didn't. So let's just make kind of a short review here. The first thing to do is to test to make sure you've got continuity on your power cord. And you test it putting a probe on this end and coming over here and testing for continuity on this one, then putting the probe on the other one, testing for continuity to the other one. Once you know that you have continuity on both of those, then you know your power cord's good. Next thing to do is test your trigger or your, uh, your switch. If that tests out okay, then you can go keep going like I did. And then you can test for continuity from this white wire to the other end of your, uh, to the end that rivets to your heating element. And if you have continuity through there, then you know you've got a good thermal fuse. So then you might have a problem with your motor. So I did have a problem with that circuit board you see there. Uh, there were basically two problems. One was a broken trace, which I had to repair. And the second problem were the diodes were burned out, so I had to replace the diodes. Uh, that, this concludes part one of this video where I showed you how to test ser several components with con by using continuity. Uh, so if you want to see part two where I'm going to go further into detail on how I repaired this, uh, you'll have to click the link in the description.